Hi everybody and welcome back. We're talking lead magnets again and we're talking about irresistible lead magnets and the five elements that I believe that you should consider when you're looking at designing your lead magnets. Okay, so this can be for big total beginners or it can be put for people who maybe you've created a few lead magnets in your business already and you're looking to improve your lead magnets so that you get more conversions, you know, whatever business you're in. Um, when I say about conversions, highly converting lead magnets, what I'm talking about is, you know, m making people, like, kind of like getting people from that journey where they're, they're just introduced to you or they've decided to download something from you for the first time to actually coming along and saying, I'm in. You know, I'm going to buy what you're offering. So your paid offers. So that could be your courses. It could be maybe you offer done for you services. Maybe it's a mastermind or maybe it's something like, I don't know, a free mini course, do it yourself. Um, it can be anything. Okay. So, but the, the idea is that we go from the lead magnet through a series of nurturing emails and then to a paid offer at the end. Now, there's different ways of doing a lead magnet nurture sequence. Um, but we always just, I always like to have in mind that those lead magnets are the attraction magnets and they, they always have a purpose and the purpose for me is to build revenue. So it has to relate to one of my paid offers directly. Okay. So for example, you need to make sure that you're giving them an easy win. Okay. So I downloaded um, a, a lead magnet one day uh, the other week that explain to me how to, um, what did it do? Yeah, that was it. It explained to me how to use something on, um, Microsoft Excel and it fixed my problem for me. <laughs> right. So, you know, it can be as simple as that. It, it, it lead magnets are so, but they have to be so useful to be successful. Okay, right, so the five elements, let's get back to the five elements of an irresistible lead magnet. You wanna make sure that you give them an easy win, okay? So think about the problems that people have time and time again. Maybe, you know, like you're quite new to this game and you're thinking, well, I haven't got any feedback from anything. How do I know what problems people are having? What I want you to do is just if you haven't already, just quickly define who your ideal client actually is. Think about them as a person and write a story about, you know, like who they are, how many kids they've got, if they've got kids, what they like to do, what they like to eat, what they like to do on, on weekends, things like that. So you've created like an you've created like an avatar for your audience. Okay. And then what I want you to do is just do some research. So go into social groups that you know are talking about related things to your niche. Or if you haven't done that already, just join a few and have a look what people are asking constantly. What are they asking that you could help them solve the problems? Another way of doing this, and I use this as well, uh, when I want to get extra angles on a problem I'm wanting to solve for people is to look at answer the public, you know, Neil Patel's tool, because it gives you like, say if I put the words lead magnet in, it will give me all the questions in a big dial around the screen of like things that people are asking Google uh, and searching for. So that might be a great starting point if you haven't got a lot of research and for, for other people who are more experienced as well, um, maybe run a focus group, uh, ask for, you know, like a, you could almost say, you know, what, um, I give you an Amazon voucher or a Starbucks voucher. I'd love to speak to a group of you. Would you be up for it? It'll take 20 minutes, half an hour, get a group of them in a room and ask them what they need help with. That can be another way of getting really, really ultra specific 
feedback on problems they're having, and then you can go to work on solving them. And ask actually on in the focus group, you can also ask like what format they prefer. Do they prefer video? Do they prefer blogs? Do they prefer a cheat sheet? What do they prefer? So that you get a real clear idea of what section your audience are liking. Okay, right, let's get back to the list. The other thing as well is I want you to consider your business is all about joy. It's all about giving you joy. I know it's a money-making thing, but you know what? To stick at it, you've really got to enjoy it. So along with that research, that audience research about what they say they enjoy in terms of formats, what do you enjoy? Do you enjoy doing a podcast more? Do you enjoy writing quizzes? Do you like the idea of, you know, messing around with a checklist? <laughs> so also factor in what you enjoy to do as well, okay? Another um, key factor of an irresistible lead magnet is design, okay? It should look ultra professional, ideally. And other people may count to this, but I wholeheartedly think that it should look and say your brand all over it. The reason is because <clears throat> you just, you're promoting yourself through it, right? You really are saying to everyone, this is me. And it's your first impression for somebody who's just thought, I like what she's saying. I really want her to help me then just power them with it. <laughs> what I do suggest is if you can buy a template, um, I tend to use Canva. Um, I use Canva Pro, my link's below. Um, if you fancy having a mess around with Canva. Canva Pro is better, it's about $10 a month, something like that, um, because you get more access to things. So like if you don't have the budget to buy a template, there are templates there for you. Um, I find that they're not as intuitive as like getting a designer to do one for you, but that is completely up to you. I have a lovely lady. Um, if you if you download below um, my thing, my <laughs> my thing, my lead magnet all about lead magnets. Um, it's got a link to Sydney Eve, and honestly, right. She does templates and they are gorgeous. They don't cost very much and they are beautiful. Um, I've had a template made by her and this is the one you will see. That's a Sydney Eve and it's beautiful. So check her out. Um, there's loads of other designers too, but I really trust Sydney to, to do a great job and it really has helped. Um, that way more people download the lead magnet than my others. So <laughs> it really does say, you know, brand it, make it look how you want it for your brand. And, and um, yeah, it really does just communicate that enthusiasm you have to help people. Okay, let's, let's move on. I want you to think about this as well with lead magnets. There's an argument about um give what was the phrase give the perception of high value give a perceived high value to someone like so that so if you're trying to make someone perceive that it's high value so then they'll buy your courses that just says to me you're misleading someone right what i want you to consider is just give high value okay do something that scares you a little bit. Give something away that makes you feel a little bit like, oh, oh, do I, do I, am I really gonna give too much? Because that is where that is the sweet spot. That is where somebody will be like, I can't believe she just gave that away. Look, 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 look. go and download it. Honestly, I can't believe she got it free. I'm not saying give everything for free, but if you give just in you just give that piece that missing piece that they've been looking for they're gonna thank you and they're gonna be like what else can she help me do that will accelerate my progress can you see what i'm saying it's like a snowball effect okay so don't just forget about that perception of high value give high value and if it feels too comfortable to give away it's not high value enough 
Okay. So if you've got any lead magnets that are sitting there now and you're like, mm, not many people have downloaded it or yeah, it doesn't, it didn't feel that difficult to give away that. Maybe just revise that offer and just see how you can really beef it up so that people be like, wow, she's giving away loads here. Okay. So yeah, I think it's a transparency thing, isn't it? It's an integrity thing. It's, it's, would I want to receive that? And I think if you can answer that question and you would be excited, then yeah. If it helps, just get one of your peers who is in, um, you know, like who might be your ICA just to say, look, hey, I've developed this. Could you have a quick look at it? Is it good value? Would it really have helped you at the beginning of your journey or something like that? And then if they're like, wow, I wish this was around, you know, that that you're on the right lines there aren't you? and also they'll give you brilliant feedback on how to improve it as well you know i want you to think about lead magnets related to your paid offers so everything's got to be ultra related okay so i'm not gonna be talking about you know if i'm a if i'm a cat a cat behavioralist. I'm not going to suddenly start talking about dogs in my nurture emails after my freebie. Or if I've got a dog course, I'm not going to be talk I'm not going to be offering a freebie about cats because you're attracting the wrong people. Uh, it's a bit of a facetious example, really, but um, it's got to be one related to the actual paid offer that you're going to make. So. Say, for example, I um, was going to have a, a help people with sales pages. So what I would do, so if I had a sales page course paid offer here and I wanted them to come in and think, oh, I, I, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that offer. Well, I would be giving them maybe a, a cheat sheet with things that you need to get together for your sales page, first of all, as a freebie. And then my nurture email sequence would be how to use that. And, and then maybe a little bit how to write it, but not too much because my paid offer would be that, but they would have been warmed up over that period of time and I would have solved a couple of problems for them. So what to get together, how much time they needed, and then little sections, how to maybe like how to get someone to write a testimonial that's a good quality one, you know, so you're, you're solving little problems on that sales page before they come to write it. And you would then be able to easily say, look, hey, you know what, you can write it on your own if you want, or you can take my sales page course, or you can download my sales page template. So it becomes very easy for them to say yes, then. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to plan the customer journey. Um, I always believe in doing it on one sheet of A4 or one sheet of letter size paper if you're in the US because it is so easy to overcomplicate things. So if you keep the page small, you can't fit a lot on it. So it keeps you ultra focused. And then if you've got things to swap around, you can do, make, make sure it, that each step builds on each other so that you come to your end paid offer and make sense for that buyer, okay? And then work backwards again and see, would it make sense that freebie first? Is that problem the first problem they're supposed to solve? Okay. Another one as well is that, you know, try and make it just one problem, okay? I do see a few freebies around at the moment where they're trying to solve three or four problems and the thing is, when someone reaches out for help from you, like say that they're, they're looking at a freebie and thinking, brilliant, I can solve a problem. They don't want to solve four at once because the thing is, they might just look at your freebie, they might download it and then go, gosh, this is massive. I, I'm i overwhelmed. I can't do this. And then just leave your freebie on the side and, and, and don't actually implement anything. So in their head then, you've overwhelmed them and it's been too much. And, oh, I know I associate that entrepreneur with, with being overwhelmed. So they don't come back. Well, they might, they might review a content, but they won't 
be as willing to buy. So it's really, really important to keep it absolutely simple. Solve one small problem. Make them feel really good. And then in your emails afterwards, check in on them. Give them strategies to help them use that freebie successfully um, so that you're building the confidence. Even if they don't use it at the beginning, you're encouraging them to use it. And the thing is as well, like it might be that your freebie solves a pre-problem that you'd never even thought of. This is why... Uh, conversations can be so powerful like in the focus groups or maybe on a dm chat that you know you're finding out what little issues people have before they even get to the point where they want to download the freebie where they say yes straight away all right so i think i have given yeah that's that's the main five points actually guys um just had to double check <laughs> i still I've, I've got this script and just have to make sure that i've got everything um because i want to i want to share value with you so but yeah just just think about your design i really encourage you to check out canva um think about giving people easy wins Think about researching with your with your actual ICA or developing a client avatar if you haven't done that already. Pick formats you love creating, okay? Because that's going to motivate you more. It's going to get the job done. Um, think about no. What else did I talk about? Think about high value, not just the perception of high value. So make it uncomfortable for yourself to give that thing away, okay? And yeah, I just. Remember, just come back to that every time. One problem, one person, one problem. It solves one problem. And lead magnets need to be related to your key offers, your key paid offers, because otherwise they're just not focused enough. And to be revenue, to be revenue generating, they need to be. Okay, right. Those are my final thoughts. Um, if you want this summary um, of the five key elements, download the guide be uh, below and you can take that away and uh, enjoy creating your lead magnets. I'd love to hear from you how you're getting on with them. Uh, okay, guys, I will see you in the next session.